Hello, this time we will create a custom text box with C sharp and Windows form. Thus obtaining a text box with a very elegant, flat and modern appearance. With customizable border color and size. You can set an underlined or rectangular border style. In addition to being able to set and change the border color when the text box is in focus, set as password field and multi-line. Doing so is very easy and fast, so let's start with the tutorial. First we will add a new element. We can add a class and inherit from the user control class and create the custom text box through code. Or we can directly add a user control and create the custom text box through the designer and code. That this time we will do it this way. You can put the name you want. Ok, we open the properties box and initialize some properties. In back color, we set the same back color of the conventional text box, we set the text color. We will also increase the font size. In the auto scale mode property, we set it to none. This is very important. We also set a 7 pixel padding on all sides. In the same way this is very important as it will help to keep the text box centered in the user control. Finally we set the size, a width of 250 and a height of 30. If you want, you can initialize other properties that you consider doing. Alright, now the most essential part. We need to add a text box to the user control. In the text box, we must set the dock property to fill, to fit the entire user control. And finally we remove the border from the text box. In this way, the text box remains centered on the user control, thanks to the padding previously established. And that's it for this part, this is the basic design of the custom text box, now we go to the code to do the rest. As usual, we will declare some fields for appearance and initialize their default values. In this case, a field for the border color, a field for the border size, and a field for the style of the text box, that is, an underlined or rectangular border style. Then we select all the fields and generate the properties, and thus be able to change the appearance of the control from the properties box. If you don't have this option in Visual Studio, you can type the properties manually. Well, when assigning a border color, we'll call the invalidate method to redraw the control. In the same way for the remaining properties. Now we will override the following event methods. First we will override the on paint event method. If you don't like overriding event methods, you can subscribe the events from the designer. We declare a field of type graphics and assign the graphics property of the paint event. Here we will simply draw the border of the custom text box. Using the using statement we create a pen object with the border size and color specified in those fields. We specify the alignment of the pen and inset. Alright, now if the style is underlined, we just draw a line at the bottom of the control. We subtract one on the y axis so that the line is fully displayed. Why if the style is not underlined, we draw a rectangle as the border. Similarly we subtract 0.5 so that the border is fully displayed. Here the border of the line or underline style is basically drawn, and in this other the border of the normal or rectangular style is drawn. Ok. Now we'll override the on resize event method, so we can update and set the proper height of the user control and text box, so we create the method for it.
As I already said, this method will take care of setting a suitable height and restricting the height change, but as long as the text box is not multi-line. For that purpose we must obtain the height of the text and the font. Then we add one to the result so that the text is displayed completely. It is not possible to change the height of the text box, so we will only set the minimum height. To do this, it is necessary to activate the multi-line property of the text box, and we set the minimum size. Then we deactivate the multi-line property again. Finally we set the appropriate height of the user control, which will be equal to the sum of the height of the text box, the top padding and the bottom padding. Very well, here we will only execute the method when the user control is in design mode to reduce the cost at runtime. And the load event will take care of putting the finishing touch and setting the proper height of the control at runtime. Okay, this would be the almost complete part of the text box appearance design. To build the custom control and test it, we need to build the project. You are done saving your changes, now let's add the new custom text box. Very well, the text box does not allow to change the height as it would be harmful, but it is allowed to change the width. Let's try the other properties created. So far everything is fine. However, there are still many essential properties to be added for a text box. These properties are simply up to the user control, they will have no effect on the text box, so let's add the important and necessary appearance and functional properties for a text box. I consider that the most important property of the text box is the password character. So we just create the boolean type property. And we return or set the value to the use system password char property of the text box. Then there is the multi line property of the text box. It should be mentioned that this property allows you to change the size of the control freely, both the height and the width. Since the update control height method only executes when the multi-line property is false. If any property already exists in the user control, we can simply override it and extend its functionality, for example the back color. So when a back color is assigned, it will have an effect on the user control and the text box. In the same way for the for color and font property. Here it is very important to call the update control height method to set the proper height, as the size of the text box varies depending on the font type and size. Ok let's continue. There is also the text property, I also consider the most important and necessary property of the text box, however, for this case I recommend not to extend this property when it comes to a text box, as it has some small drawbacks. Therefore. We must create a new property with a similar name, and work directly with the text property of the text box. Very well, optionally we can group all these custom properties into a single category, and thus be able to locate the property more quickly in the designer properties box.
you can keep adding more properties because maybe I forgot to add some necessary properties, or add a new appearance property for example an icon. Ok, I will test all these custom properties, maybe there is some bug or problem with the appearance. Everything works correctly. Ok, now just like the properties, there is also the subject of events. All these events are exclusively for the user control, and will also have no effect on the tax box added to it. So we must recreate some essential and necessary events for a tax box, mainly the default event. To understand better, I will add a conventional text box for you. These are your own events for a text box, and double clicking on it creates the default event. In this case the text changed event, which happens when the text changes or characters are inserted or deleted. However, doing the same in the custom text box creates the load event, as it is the default event for the user control. Therefore, we must change that, and add the default event and expose the other events needed for a text box. To do that, we go to the code of the custom control, and create and attach the events. First, we declare the event and put a name similar to the default event of the text box. We copy the name, and in the class header we specify as the new default event. They must realize that it is written the same as the declared event, otherwise it will not work. You should do the same for the other user controls they create, for example a custom date picker or combo box. Ok, now you just need to attach the new default event with the default event of the text box. To do this we go to the designer and create the event of the text box, we can do it from the events tab. Or through the shortcut when double clicking on the text box. Or you can also subscribe the event by code from the constructor. Well here we simply have to invoke the default event created. The functionality is simple, when the text changed event of the text box is executed, the new text changed event of the user control will also be executed. Ok. Let's try the default event. Great, now the new default event is created when double clicking on the user control. Now let's test if this event really works. Very good, it works correctly. Now it would simply be necessary to attach some necessary and common events between the user control and the text box. For example, the most used event is the click event. Here we simply call the onClick event method of the user control in the same way for the other events that you consider necessary.
This is much simpler, since the events are the same between the two, and you can attach them directly. Unlike the text changed event, it is a special event and proper to the text box. You can continue to attach other events or add other properties. For example, here I forgot to set the focus color property, that is, when the text box is focused, it does not change the border color since it indicates the current selected text box. Well then I will add this missing property. As usual, we declare a field for the border color in focused state. and a field to determine if the text box is in focus, this is optional, you can use the focused property of the text box, I'll do it this way to better understand the logic. We create the field property of focused border color. The control does not need to be redrawn here as it will not run when the focus state of the text box changes. To do this, we must change the value of the isFocus field when the text box enters the focused state or loses focus, so we need to subscribe to the enter focus event of the text box. Here we change the focus state to true, and redraw the control. Then we subscribe to the leave focus event of the text box. Similarly to above, we change the focus state to false, and redraw the control. Very well, finally we draw the borders of the focused state of the text box, for this we go to the paint method and add the following condition. If it is not in focus, we draw the border of normal color. Otherwise, we draw the border of the focused color, for this we must change the color of the pen. You can also increase the thickness of the border and lighten or darken the background or text color, to give the text box a highlight effect. Okay, the border color changes when the text box is in focus, so everything is great. So that would be all in this tutorial, I hope you liked it and helped you understand the use of user controls together with other controls to make custom controls. Until next time, goodbye.